Well, that's a really important question because I think it's really misunderstood because it isn't one particular type of behaviour, one event. It's, as described in the law, a course of conduct. But by that, we mean a whole range of things. We're really including the sort of traditional ideas of stalking, which is following somebody or tracking them on a device. But it is also impersonating them online. It is getting in contact with their friends and family. It's uh, putting out notices or something in the area that slanders them. So there's a whole range of activities. It can even include what might look quite benign uh, sort of behaviour, such as sending love letters and, and flowers. But when it's unwanted, it's intrusive it causes psychological harm. So there's a whole range of behaviour that we need to consider. The most important thing to think about is each behaviour is in the context of previous behaviour is unwanted and intrusive. So motivations for engaging with stalking behaviour vary. Uh, obviously it varies in an individual basis, but we can group the sort of motivations in, in particular ways. And this was helped by uh, Professor Mullen in the sort of late 1990s. And the way we think about that is the, perhaps the initial group is those who were in a relationship and that's ended. And the motivation for the stalking behaviour is initially about trying to re-engage with that relationship. And then perhaps some revenge or sort of uh, resentment at, at the end of it. But also it then becomes a sort of substitute relationship. So it's a way in effect of the relationship not ending. But other groups might be relationship seeking. They're looking to establish a relationship. Either they do that very poorly or they believe perhaps due to a mental illness that they're in a relationship that's not real. So those are two clear groups, somebody who's where there's been an end of a relationship and somebody else where they believe they are or should be in a particular relationship. And then the third main group that I'm going to mention are the resentful group. And as practitioners, we're going to sometimes be familiar with this uh, client group who uh, feel hard done to. They have a sort of cause or a sense of injustice uh, and then they follow that and pursue that over time. And it just is sort of layer upon layer as they work their way through the system. So understanding the motivation for the uh, stalking behaviour is really important because that then helps us to think about the different risk elements associated with those motivations and helps us address uh, our, our sort of risk management plans and our interventions in a much more targeted way.